Hey Jackals, in today's DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we'll take a look how you can make uniquely shaped lines, put them into 3D space, also put a subject or an object into the 3D space and make the lines go in front or behind the subject. Now let's get digital. I'll be doing this in a fusion composition, so if you don't have it, open the media pool, right click, make a new fusion composition, give it a name, create it, put it onto the timeline, then select it and go into the fusion page. Now this is the composition that we'll be making, but the lines will be different than what I made in this example. So to start things off, we'll be making this in 3D space, so I'll put this on the left side and we'll make a new one on the right side. You can make lines with polygons, but because we'll be doing this in the 3D space, we'll be using the ribbon node. So control space or shift space, type in ribbon, edit, if we display it, we will be able to see it, but when we add render node, this is now a 2D composition, and if we display it, we don't see anything. In that case, change the render type to this one, so OpenGL, we'll be making the adjustments later on. Now you can change the color of the ribbon in the material, this will be a solid color, we want this to be a gradient, so we'll add the background node and connect it, select this as a gradient, add two pluses, the first one and the last one will be black, so let's make those black make this one white and also select the first one and the last one and lower the alpha to zero and this will make the lines be faded at the start and at the end and to make this visible I'll make the lines thicker and we can also adjust the width and the number of the lines we don't really see any difference but we would if I display it like this so in the 3D space, we see the difference and why we chose the ribbon is because it is connected automatically between two points. And the same applies to the polygon in the 2D space. The fastest and most efficient way to make an animation using ribbons is once you have the gradient set up, is to simply use the offset to make the animation. So you can have the animation come in and come out. So maybe we'll start this one at frame 40, put this at minus 1, then at 60 it will be 0. Maybe we want this animation to hang a little bit, so 66 will also be 0, and then at maybe 86 this will be 1. So now the animation, so I didn't keyframe this, so this one will be 0 at 60 and minus 1 at 40. Now this is how the animation looks like. It's a basic one, but now we want to change the ribbon to be just straight lines into unique lines. And we will achieve that by using these nodes. So we need a displace and a banter, but first we'll just use a displace. So let's use a displace node, displace 3D. Nothing changes and that is because the displace node actually needs a colored input and that is why we use a background. So let's add the background. Let me just first display it. So nothing changes and if I connect the background with the black and white gradient, we get this. And if you move the black or the white, you can see what happens. So we have sharp edges, and that is where the blur node comes in. So if we add a blur node, and adjust the blur size, we'll be getting a smooth curve. We still don't have this smooth, and that is because we don't have enough subdivisions. We only have 10. So if we increase this number, you can see that this is now pretty much smooth. So if I display it from the top down, you can see what this actually looks like. So I'll use the subdivisions as 100, but you can increase this number if you need to. So this is now just black and white, so what you can do is simply go crazy, add a bunch of points and change the color. 
to anything that you want so it's a little bit different than it was but this is still not the effect that you want as you can see this is a lot different than just this a little bit curved line and to get really unique looking lines we use the bend node so in that case control space to open the bend to open the select tools and use the bend node display it and you have a lot of options in this case maybe i'll adjust the twist it looks okay but i don't want to use it on the y axis let's see what i got on the x and z axis maybe the z axis is what i want so it looks something like this you can also add another bender node and let's see this time you want to maybe also use the y axis or the x axis depending on what you want this one looks okay we have a hole in the center that we can use for the animation and if you have too many lines you can go into the ribbon and change the ribbon width and the number of lines and you can also change the line thickness so maybe something like that the animation stays because it is made in the background node if you don't like the position you can always add a transform 3d so you can now position this how you want by rotating it but i'll just leave it to default because i got the shape that i want with the hole in the center now let's take a look how this actually looks in the 2d space and it doesn't actually look the same as i had it in the 3d space so in this case i would maybe adjust the translation maybe something like that you can also always scale this up if you need to and make all of the adjustments in the ribbon to make the lines better in this case i would maybe actually use more subdivisions so maybe 200 and maybe even more than that if i want this to be super smooth now this effect is now basically done if you don't want to have white lines you can simply go into the background node and change the white color to what you want maybe something like that you can also add all kinds of effects in this case soft glow after to render 3d so we can add it now and we'll disable it later on so let's display it looks amazing i'll just leave it as is now as you can see in this case i also have a 3d camera and we may also need to add it so i'll just put it in between here and add the merge 3d node then select the camera put this all the way back and let's see what we see now now this effect is basically done the last thing that you want to do is to add the subject to an object ideally you would use a video clip that has a green screen or any kind of background that is uniform so you can remove it easily in this case this is a green screen as you can see so this is easily removed with a delta keyer simply click on the pet icon hold it and let go when it goes over the background that you want to remove now it's not perfect i still see some residue here so maybe i'll go to this point this point seems okay go to the mat tab use the road dilate if you need to adjust this by a tiny bit you can also add the blur if you need to but in this case the green screen was awesome now if you don't have this option and you have the studio version you can also use the magic mask let's see if this shows up now i guess this is a little bit buggy this is a compound clip with the magic mask applied but for some reason it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do but to get to that point we'll simply use a clip use the magic mask on a clip mask the subject to an object depending on the option that you have you will then 
track it forward, backward, or forward and backward if you're somewhere in between. When we do the magic mask selection, then you'll want to do the compound clip of this magic mask selection, and then you'll be able to use that clip in the fusion composition. You can also do this manually, although I don't advise it. You can use a polygon mask, simply connect it, and just go around the subject or an object. If this is just an image, it will be okay. If it's a video clip, you will have a lot of frames to do this for. In this case, I'll just use this video clip with the green screen removed. So at this moment, we connect this to an image plane. So I have now used this media, use the delta key here to get rid of the green screen and connected it to the image plane to put it into the 3D space and connected the image plane into the merge 3D. So now we can see this image inside the 3D space. And now what we need to do is position this image inside this effect. So it's somewhere around here and we will also need to scale it up so it matches the original size. So let's see how that look like. Connect it here. So the delta key here will also go to the back of the merge and this will go into the front. If I now display this, you can see that we have two images. The small one is the image plane and we need to scale it up so it matches the original size of the media in two. So with the image plane selected, we'll simply adjust the scale. And in this case, I have to position the X and Y in the translation. And to match this perfectly, or as best as we can, go to the merge node and in the apply mode, you could use the blend, which doesn't help as much as, let's see, maybe difference. So with difference, if you have everything overlapping just perfect, this will be totally black. So something like this, I think this is fine. Let's go back into the 3D space. And in this case, it's actually not what I want. So I'll now actually position the effect and leave the image as is. So with this transform, I'll simply track the effect back. Let's see, how does it look like? So maybe sounds like that. And if you go to the merge node and display it, well, it's still black. We need to put this back to normal. It looks like this. As you can see, this goes in the front, this goes in the back, and this goes now in the front as well. And this one goes in the back. And as for the soft glow, let me now enable it. I'll give you five seconds to know what will happen. Everything that's being output from the render node will be affected by the soft glow. So in this case, also the image. And that is why I have this delta key here also applied as a mask in the soft glow. So if I do that, I didn't get the result that I wanted. It got rid of the soft glow here. So with the soft glow selected, go to the settings and simply apply the mask as inverted. So the final composition that I made looks something like this. Now, obviously, you would need to adjust the soft glow settings so you don't get the halo-like effect unless you wanted to, but I hope you get the idea. Now, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content, and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.